Hi there, Paul here from Spitfire Audio. In this video, we're going to look at the individual mic options available within the BBC Symphony Orchestra plugin. As you can see, I've loaded up one of the sounds from the cello section. This is the spiccato. It's quite a short sound. So that will help us to hear what's going on with the mics a little bit more clearly. So I've got something that will be recognisable to uh, many Spitfire users, which is a rough blend of a little bit of a standard kind of close miking, um, the Decca Tree and the Outriggers. The Outriggers are Omni mics that are positioned to the sides of the Decca Tree at the sides of the room, and they give a little bit of extra width. So this sounds like this. So that gives you quite a full sound. The first thing I want to look at is what are the effects of adding in spill mics from the other instruments that aren't playing. So these are microphones that are left open uh, in the woodwind section, the brass section, the percussion section, and also uh, the rest of the string section. So all of the other mics that would be recording the other instruments in the string section. And we're going to add them in one by one so that you can see what the effect is. So again, first, uh, I'll just play something very simple and I'll add them in one by one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a full mix of all of the spill mics. And that's all of the spill mics, including the string players that aren't sat there. So all the other string sections and then all of the woodwind, brass and percussion mics. And that sounds like this. Let's turn that off again. So you can hear that we've really filled out the sound by doing this. It's actually even more dramatic if you compare it to, let's say, just the tree mic. So let's leave the tree mic up on its own. Let's turn the spill off again. So let's see what's happening within those spill sections just on their own. So let's we've turned off all of the direct mics on the cellos and now we're going to listen to just the spill from each of the other orchestral sections. So strings first. Then woodwinds. Brass. And finally the percussion. We can also try using one of Jake Jackson's mixes, um, of which there are two. The first one is a kind of more, much more realistic um, and kind of almost flat signal, giving you a nice full sound, which sounds like this. And the second one is a little bit more hyped, just to give you two different flavours there. If we go back to mix one and look at the addition of the spill mics, so this is without spill, and with the spill, So there's lots of controllability and you can design uh, the exact amount of spill you want from each section um, very, very simply. Now, one thing you may have noticed um, going up and down while I'm adding mics in and out is the memory allocation. And at the moment, I've got every articulation that the cellos play loaded into memory. It's very simple to remove anything that you're not using from the uh, preset simply by using the preset editor here and deleting any articulations you don't want to use. So that is um, that is a way to save memory if you want to have more mics and you have just have a specific part that you want on one of the articulations. So let's switch to Pizzicato now and have a listen to some of the other mic options um, that we've got up here. The first signal here is the mono mic as used by the BBC Symphony Orchestra from the 1930s onwards to record the orchestra's performances. Um, and so that has an amazing vintage sound. It's got that real kind of characteristic sound. Now, if we contrast that with the other close mic options, the first one are the, uh, is a close mic mix, which is positioned in the correct place that the cello section would be positioned in. The next close mic that we have is the leader mic, and this is positioned directly above the leader of the section. And that almost excludes all of the other sound of the section, so you can kind of use it as a solo mic um, or to add a really kind of personal kind of detail to the sound that you're using. Um, there are, obviously for the sections, there are also 
individually recorded soloists just on their own with without the rest of the section. But this is still an incredibly useful mic to use within the context of the section performance. Next up is stereo. And this is a stereo pair of Coles 4038s. And these are positioned on the section in such a way as to get a really nice kind of uh, vibrant, um, punchy round sound. And that's a real way to feature the sound of the section. There's also close wide. And this is for when you wanna use this sound and you wanna use this section, but you don't want it to be in position. So this is a wide, uh, still a very close mic sound, but it's just occupying the whole width of the stereo field. And if we check those out with a different sound, let's put up the uh, Consordinos. So here's that close wide sound. Contrasted with the stereo mic. And the close mic mix. And finally, the leader. So let's go back to the spiccato and look at the Decca tree. Looking at a similar sound from the brass section, uh, we've got the uh, Decca tree up first. Let's add the spill mics in first of all. So you can hear the added fullness there. Let's look at the same mix that we started out with the strings. And again, adding in our spill mics. So just loading up the flute and doing the same experiment. Here's our standard kind of mix and adding in the spill. Now while we're here, let's look at the stereo mics again. So these are, if you remember those, coals. Uh, this is a really good way to get a full sound from a solo instrument if you want to feature it, but you don't want to go so close in with the close mics. Now the mids operate in a slightly different way for the woodwinds and brass. This is a stereo pair which is positioned above the section, uh, behind the strings, above the section that you're actually, that you're actually focusing on. Um, and here that gives you a little bit more distance, but it's also quite a useful alternative sound to the stereo as well. And looking at that, for example, on the brass here on the trumpet, We can change the variation here to use triple tongue or indeed quad tongue. And the two alternatives for a tight end or a longer end. This is quite a nice sound to look at some of the other mics as well. So let's go for the two mixes. So this is uh, the Jake's real mix. And his slightly more hyped mix. And going back to look at our close wide mix. And finally, a slightly different mix, the close mics, the outriggers, and let's put in the string spill and the woodwind spill. So let's have a quick listen to the horns and look at some of the miking options uh, that we have for the kind of full room sound and the kind of edge cases. So the tree. is the kind of root, it's the kind of basic sound that you'll be familiar with from most or classical orchestral recordings. 
Now, we've looked at the outriggers, which are the slightly wider sound uh, the kind that you would add into the tree. We've also got these ambient mics. So um, these are slightly further out than the outriggers. And they give you much more of a feel of the room. So when you add in, let's say, for example, the close mics and the tree, with those ambient mics in, if we take them out, you can see that you lose some of the kind of um, effect of distance of the sound. It's different from the spill. Let's put the spill back in. That gives a fullness to the sound, but it doesn't give you that kind of distance. So that's the purpose of the ambient mics. Now there is another slightly further uh, set of mics which are up in the balcony. Now, the balcony is behind the conductor, so uh, as far away from the orchestra as it's possible to get in the room. And that sounds like this. And if we add that in to our close and tree mix, it sounds like this. And without, put it back in. So you can hear that gives you, it's a, it's a great room. It's um, because it's more of a scoring stage style room. You don't get a, an enormous kind of reverb tail with these, but it enables you to really finely tune the sound and the kind of expansiveness of the sound that you want for each of these individual sections. The sides is the widest possible sound. These are useful for Atmos mixing, but they're also quite an interesting sound on their own. So if we just turn the close and tree off and just have a quick listen to those. And let's put those back in with the tree and a little bit of close as before and have a listen. Let's take them out. So a very different sound. Just looking at this sound, let's look at the close wides. And if we listen to the same mic, but with the sync solo horn as opposed to the A4 horns. And this is really interesting because the horn really changes with the room. Um, let's go back to the standard close mics. We'll add in things one by one. Let's add in the tree. Outriggers, spill. So here you can see the, the real difference as we start to add in different mics and um, tailoring the sound to be exactly the kind of sound that you want. You can go from a very, very dry sound, um, very, very intimate and up close, all the way up to this kind of big, expansive, full sound. And while we're here, let's uh, turn all these mics off and check out Jake's mixes for this sound as well. So the first mix um, with the longs cuivre, which means kind of brassy. And then with some marcatos. And looking at the second mix, staccatissimos. For the sake of completeness, let's listen to the mixes designed for the Atmos uh, sound and we'll put this back onto the Staccatissimo so that you can hear quite clearly what's happening to the mix. So this is the front Atmos mix. And this is the rear Atmos mix. Now all of these different microphones can be sent out of different outputs. So there is a lot of controllability for setting up any kind of surround configuration or Atmos configuration. So again, listening to just the tree here, um, but let's, uh, let's do a little experiment. So I'm gonna put up, I'm gonna set up quite a chunky mix. Let's say that I want those outriggers in there. Let's say I also want the string spill and I want to use the brass spill on this. So with all of these articulations um, loaded and active, my memory count is going up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the articulation manager and I'm going to say, right, let me get rid of 
everything that I'm not going to use. Um, I'm going to load up the spiccatos, pizzicatos, trems, not harmonics. Let's leave saltesto, no trills, and um, not the macato. So let's see what difference that's made. So now uh, my memory usage has come right down. I've still got loads of mics loaded, as you remember. Um, and let's have a listen. Pizzicatos. A bit of Bartok Pizzicato as an alternative. These lovely short harmonics. It's fabulous Saltastos. And with the tremolos, you can affect the amount of kind of bow dig that you get at the start of the note by playing um, more lightly or more heavily. So if you play it lightly, you get a really long um, attack. And if you play it harder, you lose some of that attack. So you can start a phrase and then... And finally, just a quick look at some of these mics again, looking at the kind of extreme low end of the brass section. So looking at the contrabass tuba, um, we've got our staccatissimo um, up on the tree mics. On your vintage mono mic. Close mic. It's really interesting because the close mic gives you the bite of the instrument for brass instruments, but it often can end up, um, if you only mic something close, it often ends up sounding slightly, um, you know, insipid. If you compare that to the sound that you get once the sound has been able to travel into the room and resonate the room a little bit. So adding in that close mic for bite. And then adding in our spill mic. So let's put them up separately. So the strings, woodwinds, the rest of the brass and the percussion. So it really makes a huge difference there. And finally, looking at a few of these closer options, the stereos, which isn't, you can hear there, it doesn't have, it's not right up against the instrument, but it does have a nice kind of um, closer sound. And then these mids, and here the sound profile is changing because you've got that extra bit of distance uh, from the instrument, the super wide sound. And finally, the close wide sound. Which almost comedic there. While we're here, let's check out Jake's mixes. And the hyped mix. So that's a little bit about the individual mic choices that we made when recording BBC Symphony Orchestra. Um, it helps you to tailor the sound exactly to the sound that you need for your production. There's lots and lots of options in there from the very driest, tightest, most upfront, close sound, all the way to kind of huge, expansive sounds. And with the spill mics, you get this incredible 3D that kind of emerges around the sound, uh, incredibly useful there. Keep an eye on the website and on our socials. We're going to be putting up a lot more content over the coming weeks to show all different aspects of the BBC Symphony Orchestra plugin. Subscribe if you haven't done already. And if you want to be notified next time we put a video up, ding the little bell icon. Thanks very much for watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye bye.